What's up with the game? It's your boy, Josh. Back with another video, man. Today we got Cat Williams Unleashed Club Shay Shay. Explain the story because you really know it uh, more than me. Like what's going on? The big uproar about Cat Williams. I don't know about an uproar with, with, with Cat Williams. But bottom line is that Cat Cat Williams is is he comes with his own unique set of controversy, mm -hmm. but he. He's known to speak speak truth as he sees it, so you have to respect it because when he articulate articulates his position, is it's not that he does it without any um, uh, without any intelligence, and, mm -hmm. and it's clear, and is very um, um, influential. Yeah, because you had said something about the Hollywood thing. Yeah, Hollywood is a is a meat grinder. Hollywood will wear you out. Oh, that's what he was talking about. Yeah, Holly, I heard Hollywood is a, is a, is a is a beast of a machine. It's not designed. Um, it's designed to look good. Okay, it's like it's like a plant. On the surface, everything looks real nice and neat and all that. But when you lift it up out of the out of the holder, it's ugly underneath the roots. And so when you when you show Hollywood in its in its in its raw form and the roots. It is not pretty at all, and yeah. Cat Cat speaks on that quite quite often. I heard he was dissing a lot of celebrities. Dissing or telling the truth? I don't know. We it could, it could be here, but 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 that that's the thing about it is is a combination of your truth, I guess, and my truth. Yeah, and how folks see it, but but he speaks how he sees it, and is very he's very persuasive. Yeah, he got he got eight million views in one day, so. I seen Kevin Hart respond. I seen Ricky Smiley. I heard he was talking about Cedric, Steve Harvey, <laughs> everybody into the uh, the comedy world. And so. the, the the thing about it is that if he was lying, or if what he said had no merit, there w wouldn't be a need to respond. But we finna see. We finna get straight to it. If you know, make we'll sure you like. We'll still never know. Uh, yeah. because, because they know they know the truth. Cats. He speaks on. on he speaks from his vantage point. Though. So he's basically like the one who um he don't mess with the industry, basically, right? He's like the like the young boy. Yeah, he like the young boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even say that. He it's just he cat doesn't play to uh he don't to, get the, to the everybody. normal industry inroads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. He doesn't care about about sucking up to, to anybody. He doesn't yeah. care about getting along with everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, at least my my impression of him is that is it, with him you can take it or leave it. He don't follow the crowd. He, right. He go his different route. He, he, but he we walks to the beat of his own. We're gonna go straight to it. If you don't actually like, comment, subscribe, follow the Instagram. Uh, I got a raffle going on. Details. So uh, let's get straight to it. <sighs> This is the other side of Kirk Franklin Prince. <laughs> <laughs> this is the reckoning. 2024. Oh, so this is really like brand new. Huh? This is really like brand new. He said 2024. Yeah. Did you say that? Okay. Price. You can hear me? Yeah. Got the right. dice to swap all my life. I've been grinding all my life. Hello, welcome to another episode of Club Shay Shay. I am your host, Shannon Sharp. I'm also the proprietor of Club Shay Shay, the guy that's stopping by for conversation and the drink today. Ladies and gentlemen, you're gonna love him. Some call him the greatest. You know he brushes The greatest, one of the greatest comedians, today. dead or alive. One of America's like greatest bad, entertainers, man. one of the funniest men on the planet, world-renowned, multi-talented, a comedy legend. He's touring. To, he's the top touring comedian selling out arenas. He's a hilarious storyteller, Emmy award-winning actor, voice actor, rapper, writer, producer, director, icon, genius, a national tre treasure, philanthropist, humanitarian, social activist, a father, <laughs> one of the great funny men of see. our generation and any I generation. Miss Cat Williams. Have to, have to time Thank right you, sir. How was that, was that intro? Magnificent. I you are, you are, you are magnificent at intros and you did not skimp on mine. I appreciate it. Appreciate that. Fair you know, anytime you come to Club Shay Shay, we have to toast. Yes. Bro, you've been doing it. I mean, you told, you're one of the top two, you're the, one of the top touring comedians of all time. You already got started before we started taping. Mm. <laughs> you see how he popped? I did. 
Appreciate that. Tell the people at home. I thought they was lying. And, um, <laughs> yeah. I this like particular alcohol is stronger than you think it would be, probably by about two. And unbelievably smoother and milder by the same maybe 30% than you could possibly expect. And unlike cognacs the world over, this one doesn't taste like wood at the end and it doesn't taste like it's got artificial colors and it doesn't taste like it's got artificial flavors. Uh, it's what a, it's that? a fine product. That's what he said. He's a connoisseur, like, you can tell. He's a, con he's a cognac he's a connoisseur. Cognac. He understands the I method that goes into making cognac. Right. Well, as a comedian, you get free drinks at the club. <laughs> so all comedians either turn out to be connoisseurs well, like myself right. or straight up and down alcoholics <laughs> like 60 percent of Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, thanks for stopping by the club. I understand Thank that you're very, very busy. And for you to take time out of your busy schedule and stop in today, we really, really appreciate it here at Club Shay Shay. Thank so thanks for so stopping much. by, Kat. And I, I needed you to know why from. I came by. Yeah, I need you to tell us why. People know I don't go everywhere. I'm not interested in talking to people unless it's like a Larry King or somebody of an amazing ilk that I would actually want to go talk to in real life. Okay. Um, I don't do it so I can sell product and I got things to sell, so let me come talk. Um, mm, you have see? a great product here and so as he, a he fan base what he's doing, so. we love the attention okay. that you spend on the guest we we love how much work you've done how well you know them how prepared you are the same things that we liked about you in football <laughs> you brought that on over to here <laughs> and that's uh, why it resonates and the reason Same i woke. had to come is because you've made a safe place for the truth to be told. Uh -oh. You know what I mean? Thank you. I appreciate and that. I have watched all of these lowbrow comedians come here and mm. disrespect you in your face <laughs> and tell you straight up lies. <laughs> I'm talking about things that have never been heard in all of black Hollywood. They feel comfortable sitting here and lying to you about it. You gonna set the record straight? Are you kidding me? You let Ricky Smiley sit here and you said out that mouth, you stole Friday after next, the one I was in? <laughs> I wish all, all of America fumbled a bit when that happened. And, and then he said some stuff that, that we that? haven't heard in 100 years in Hollywood. You ain't say nothing. But this man told you he had Cat Williams' role. He was gonna be Money Mike. Wait. And Cat Ooh. Williams, was gonna now, be I was gonna be the before. Santa Claus. I now let's heard three quick say, points. I heard, I heard so Ricky Smollett uh, was supposed to be Money Mike. Right. I, I've heard. I've heard. I don't remember exactly how, but I've heard that that, that Ricky Smiley was was supposed to be um, the Money Mike, and or he auditioned for it, or wanted, or had the part, something like that. And Cat Williams ended up with it exactly. Yeah. Now, I don't know because Hollywood is 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 a, is a ruthless machine, though. I think they both could have no be good, but Cat still no still got Cat. No, but Ricky Smiley, he yeah. Cat Cat could not have been no. They couldn't have switched roles. Yeah, yeah. There's no way. I'm just saying, Ricky Smiley still would have did good though. You mean in Hollywood they cast a five foot five black Santa Claus that weigh 145 pounds? That's your story. Your story is the Ricky Smiley that couldn't even do curse words because he had a Christian fan base. He was gonna play the pimp. Why you didn't ask him why no, wait, he played a woman? Okay, that's not fair because acting is acting. And you got some folk who can, some folk who can't. But the point is that in acting, you have to become somebody else, study the role for that somebody else is actually doing, or study the role of, of your particular character, if you can, and be that person. So that's not fair, but I still, I still get the point of what he's saying. Man, in more movies than he's played a man. Well, I didn't know he... He shouldn't be able... You wouldn't let an a, 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 a athlete that been on steroids talk about one of the greats. <laughs> Ricky Smiley can't act because Ricky Smiley can't act. He told you the story about when the movie came out. Where did he say he watched it? At home. He wasn't even at the premiere. 
you telling this man you stole that. Oh, so he could get his name in the same sentence with a great one. It is sad. He was just that bitter when we were shooting it. He told everybody it should have been my role. Everybody on the. Oh, Ricky Smiley was the um. He was a Santa Claus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. He was, he was running See, around. See, why that's, do you think no cat, cat? Cat Williams don't. He probably could have done it, but, you know, as an actor. But that's not. So he's saying he was mad while they were shooting because Cat got his role. Or something. Oh, that's what Ricky said. Yeah. Oh, that's I what you said. He shouldn't have I been think... mad. If you in a movie, you just need to be glad from that. Well, nowadays that's even questionable. But uh, and we're not finna keep pausing. It's just we gotta. You know what I'm saying. Okay. Cast member has ever said it. Roger P. Henson is getting. He couldn't have played that role like you. I thought he. He's he like, No one. Why no? He was with KD. He beat up Terry Crews. Why nobody know KD? this story? You talking about in Hollywood? They switched off roles. You take this and he. What? So Ricky Ricky Smiley knows this, and I don't know why he would lose a child and come on the air and start lying. That's why people believe in rituals, right? Yeah, it's right. because well, why would he lie? Yeah, I don't right. know why liars lie, but I can tell you this: we auditioned in Los Angeles. Yes, I was audition number two hundred and one. Two hundred black comedians auditioned for the role of Money Mike with me. You're saying all two hundred and one of us was auditioning, and you had already had the role and had already shot the role in four days. Mm. The truth of the matter is, the Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom, and that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. Wait, Cat wait. Williams, and that's what there is. The Money Mike in the original script got raped in the bathroom, and that's what Ricky Smiley was okay with. He talking about that scene where he was uh, where they was in the bathroom, bathroom. But yeah, and then he used the pliers to, to put it on Terry Crews and yeah. chill him on out. Yeah, he because he was about to get raped. Right. See, see, you have some mm. some actors in Hollywood that don't mind playing the role of of a gay person or or, or gender yeah. switched person. And Cat is yeah. basically saying, "I'm not down with that." You don't see Cat in those types of roles now. In in First Sunday, you know, it was more of a of a of a of an effeminate role, but he wasn't he wasn't just all out gay. What he was doing, in my opinion. He was picking up the stereotypical role of the choir director in the uh, uh, in a black church. We six minutes in, and he's getting spicy. Pat Williams had to take the risk in front of the studios and the cast and our powers that be in his very first movie, and say respectfully, humbly, guys, if we're talking about anything else, I have no credibility and I have no pull, but we're talking about comedy. Right. Where I have all the credibility mm. and all the pull. The problem with Friday After Next is we're trying to make a classic comedy. And this comedy involves a rape. And rape it's is never, never funny, so no matter funny. who it happens to it or yeah. what the circumstances are. Funny. If you would allow me to allow us to do this movie without a black man getting raped in it. Thank you. I promise you that it will be twice as funny as it would be with him getting raped. Yep, yep, yep. I, so considering that's I the fully, real story, why would you bring up that story? 35 members of the cast and crew have never brought up that Ricky Smiley was going to play Money Mike. No one ever saw me put on a Santa Claus suit. We got a wardrobe department. They made a Santa Claus suit for me. Why that wasn't in the bloopers? Why? And and here's the other thing. But Everything see, that Money Mike that said, Cat so Williams wrote. Shannon. So what Ricky Smiley say on his? Mm. You can't say my lines. I wrote them. That's so, how I already know that I'm gonna be funnier than you. What he told everybody was Cat Williams, hey, hey, don't nobody know who he is? I'm so on the radio. I'm with Steve and Sam. Everybody knows him. That's black what he told everybody. Was going to get raped that, in that scene. Originally, how yeah. they wrote it. And he came he, in and was like, right. I can do whatever y'all want, but don't do that. Right. He was, saying, he was saying, look, if y'all talking about drama, okay, y'all the experts in that. If you're talking about maybe a horror movie, you know, I can't speak on that. But when, it, when you talk about comedy, yeah. that's my lane. So let me let me let me speak on it. And what what he articulates is that rape is not funny. It's not cool. 
period. Yeah. And now you're going to take and have a black man being raped on there? No, that's that for one, it's going to set us back. It's not a good look. Cat says my st my standard is set too high. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. And he did he didn't bow down. He didn't succumb. I feel that. Body yeah. that would listen to on the set. <laughs> That's the truth of the matter. He was so egregious, not now, then. He was so egregious that, and Hollywood has never heard this in a hundred years. He was so egregious, I put in my contract that I won't work with Ricky Smiley again unless he's in a dress. Mm. Now, what was Ricky Smiley's next movie? Was it First Sunday? Did he wear a dress Ooh. in it? You bet he did, it's in my contract. <laughs> Why would you put that in your put this in your contract, cat? That's where he's the, a believable actor. Him and Tyler see, Perry can't play a man to say they like. That's kind of they play good women, and I believe that the best actor should be oh, in the best role. Oh, he's and exposed. So that's why, because when we released that clip and he said that, you responded because he said he was supposed to play Money Mike and you were supposed to say play Santa Claus. An outright lie. So, that he knows is a lie. So why would he say it? Because he's a liar. Nobody knows why liars lie. <laughs> and that's why I had to come on the program. Liars lie because it's not conducive to tell the truth. That's why liars lie. Mm. Cedric did the same thing. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it don't line up that I did it on TV in 2018? You came to see me at the comedy store do it in 2019 and then did it on the Kings of Comedy. Like, what doesn't line up? I, this is a televised joke that Mark Curry helped me punch up and get to the level that it was. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he- Now, I've heard that before, that Steve had stolen some stuff, some, some material from Mark Curry. I have heard that. Um, there's also, I mean, there, there's a lot of scuttlebutt or rumors surrounding comedians stealing other people's materials. So yeah. I believe it does happen. I mean, it, it's going to happen in all professions, but really, it's really uh, a sign of admiration, truth be told, because they're saying that your work is, is, that, is that clean or it's just that good that I dig it. Yeah. So. Principal, and he wear a suit, and he... And then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. And it's a man unit. Then you ask him, why you not a movie star? I didn't want to be a movie star. This is yes, the same did. Negro that hated on Bernie with this same thing. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000. Now, Cedric the Entertainer is one of my, one of my favorite comedians, but Cat is absolutely right on that. When you watch said, and, and and the part that trips me out is none sure. of the movie directors ever pick this up or talk about it. But like, get out the chair real quick. Why? So I can make your make your chair high. I don't want my chair high. This for the video. I don't. I'm not fin finna be sitting here. Look, I leave my stuff alone. The thing about it <laughs> is that Cedric, uh, when you hear him in different roles, he'll switch voices, mm -hmm. and what I mean is. He'll, he'll switch from talking proper to now talking um, more more urban or rural, depending upon the character at, at, at that moment. And it's obvious, at least in my opinion, nobody really ever comments on it, but, but, but I see it as soon as he does it. It's like, uh, he did his sketch comedy show. And it just, it didn't, it didn't come off right because he's not necessarily a polished actor. Mm -hmm. When he was on Steve Harvey's show, he, he wasn't necessarily a polished actor. Now, again, I love said as a comedian, when he's being, being, you know, hood said, love it all day. But when he turns around and starts talking proper, the, uh -huh, whole, yeah. the whole thing changes. There's a new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good over KB and look like Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> there ain't none. You would have to have a range. I played a lot of characters, 60 movie roles. I'm not playing Cat Williams in there. I don't know, I don't know, Cat. We might not let you drink anymore. Well, you, you, I mean, we ain't even got I'm not fueled by alcohol. I've had a sip less than you. <laughs>
The truth don't need motivation. I'm just saying I can't let these dudes lie. Cedric's sitting here telling you why he ain't a movie star. He over here look like a walrus. You didn't say nothing. He can't even get his arms off his stomach sitting over here. Why I'm not a movie star. What? It's a situation. He never wrote anything. Remember when Cedric the Entertainer can't, starts, he's supposed to be singing, though. dancing, and telling jokes. That's why he's called the Entertainer. Right. We found out he can't sing, can't dance, and doesn't he's write doing jokes. He did four comedy specials. They're so bad, Shannon. They're not available on Netflix or Tubi. Can I say that again for the audience? They're so bad that they're not available on Netflix or Tubi. You don't think Sam's a good, a good comedian? The world doesn't think that, I sir. I have 12 that, comedy specials. He has four specials that are not available on Netflix or Tubi. It seems to me, Kat, that you had a lot to get off your chest. No, no. You wanted to set the record straight. Winners are not allowed to allow losers to rewrite history. I don't say any of these things if my name is not breached by these people on your platform. They, if you give them a liar a platform to lie, then I, I'm not being messy by saying, hold on, that never happened. It's untrue. And there are hundreds of witnesses for each thing Facts. I'm saying. So let me ask Facts. you this. We should have did this live. No. What is your relationship you with Steve Harvey, out. Ricky uh -oh. Smiley, and Cedric the Entertainer as you sit uh -oh. here currently? They've for 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. The way that Ricky Smiley kept appearing at all of my auditions is because of Steven said he would tell anybody that, listen, they got a gang on that side. They know what it is. They know who the gang is. Why Earthquake not in movies? Because he's illiterate. He can't read. And they found that out when they gave him a show and put the cards in front of him. Like all of these dudes are co-entwined and they share secrets. And this is the age of truth. And, and, and the truth doesn't need to be scared of the fact that people tell lies. Uh, cats on drugs. Where are the stories? <laughs> Why is there no story of anybody who ever sold a drug to me, did a drug with me, was around me when I was inebriated? I got five daughters. I got five sons. Why would we tell these ridiculous now, stories? Kat, because Kat it's has been arrested a whole lot, but, yeah, but, yeah. But, but the charges don't stick. I do know at one point, and I don't know if they're even going to talk about it on here, but at one point, uh, he he got whooped. You know, by some young kid, a fifteen-year-old. That, but that kid, that that boy was Baby Huey, and that rascal, that rascal, he gave Po Cat the business. But yeah. Cat ain't nothing but a buckle vibe, anyways. But um, you know, it, stuff happens. <laughs> competition you you feel like well why comedies comedy guys can't just get along yes why, why why didn't you get along with the other teams you were competing against if you're a denver bronco why you don't get along with the cowboys something wrong with you but i don't disagree i don't no, dislike no, all the no. cowboys cat damn you like this no like, that's okay, not what community do you did like? you play against the team yes i've taken 46 comedians with me on the road 46 okay I'm not the comedian you can give that to. I only put on comedians that are funnier than me. No. Anybody that ever told you this. There ain't a whole lot of comedians funnier than, than, than Cat Wiz. I'm sorry. Was a fat Faison liar. There's nobody yeah, you, like you, me in the business. Faison just called a straight. Faison said that getting a Netflix special is easy. I have 12 specials. Guess how many Faison got? Zero. So Why is idea. he allowed to have conversations about real stand up people? We do not let people who are on the juice discuss real athletes. That's all. As a journalist, that's all. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I don't ha harbor any resentment to any of these entities because I can't be jealous. I've never seen them have anything that I ever wanted. If you sign up for their program, you get a light skin, 
weird face wife that never do an interview. Oh, in man, tw- on. Listen, in 20 years, won't do an interview. Nobody's ever talked to her and they, she's never been interviewed anywhere. And now understand, I'm not talking about one person. What I just told you applies to seven people. How they all end up with that. That's part of what you get. I came in this business saying I was going to expose. Mm. When I talked about Michael Jackson, when I talked about R. Kelly, they canceled me for these things because why would you talk about another black dude? Race is not where the line is drawn. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side. Period. Period. All of these uh, big dick deviants is all catching hell in 2024. It's up for all of them. It don't matter if you Diddy or whoever you is. T.G. Jakes, any of them. The, all, every, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And, and, and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. Mm. Mm. The truth Can't is be mad at them for that. I, I, I stand on telling the truth at the same time. You also have to have to bear the truth in love. Just because you're telling the truth about something or somebody doesn't mean that you that you that you that you're allowed to have a nasty attitude in doing the same. If you're gonna tell the truth, tell it to correct and or help. Don't don't use the truth to try to, to try to hurt anybody with, with malice intent. I guess that's my only caveat to that because just because uh, a person stands up to try to do right doesn't mean that they're going to be perfect and the mark of maturity isn't necessarily having everything right but the mark of maturity is growth I didn't have no more of probably got to have four of them shattered <laughs> uh, I kind of <clears throat> I'm getting on here All right. <laughs> after that I don't really kind of do it again. Do it one more time <laughs> mm-hmm. right we good now? Because the people want to know well, why would he get blackballed? Yeah, oh, because I was ask because you that. because in thirty years I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to be doing, you would tell it. No, somebody come to tell me. Okay. I gather that. I value that. I'll pay for that. Come, tell me. I know so many things I shouldn't know, and they all know it. They all know it. Why? Because you don't make me the villain. Not the guy that raises black children and ain't never done a hard drug in his life and don't have no stories of doing nobody dirty. And, and they'll just go out and they'll lie. The, the industry doesn't mess with Cat because he didn't show up for the studio. No studios have ever said that. Look at my IMDb. It will show you that no studio has ever lost money with me on the script. How? That's why I'm saying that's why I can't let Ricky Smiley say he was supposed to play Money Mike because I wrote the words for Money Mike. I designed the hair for Money Mm. Mike. I collaborated with the wardrobe department and made outfits to make sure that no one in America would be wearing what Money Mike was wearing. I told them to go get the prowler. I then told them to paint it purple. I told them don't have an actor at playing a pimp. We could get an actual pimp Archbishop Magic Don Juan to play like I. I did far too much work for somebody to come yeah. years later and try to tag along just that for their own fixed. self-aggrandizement. Why didn't Cube set the record straight? Terry Crews could have set the record straight. Mike Epps could have set the record straight. Why none of them set the record straight? That's what you were supposed to ask him when he told you those lies that but no I didn't one's know ever it was a heard. Lie. Right, but he's telling you something no one's ever heard of. Nobody has ever heard. Oh, Matt Aff- Ben Affleck and Matt Damon was in a movie, and somebody said, y'all should switch roles. And, like, this is a business. But that's the thing, Cat. <laughs> Normally, when- I'm good. And people are giving you information, I'm thinking I'm hearing it for the first time, and they're giving information no one else knows or have ever heard. So I'm taking them right. at face value. These are like this is like Steve Harvey telling people he used to be homeless. That's my story. That's not his story. Steve Harvey wasn't never homeless. When he Mark Curry was touring with him 25 years ago, he was making three thousand dollars a show in cash and doing five shows a week. They, they just tell the stories. This my See, thanks I'm to my.
my wife, I'm where I am. You said that about the first wife. You forget <laughs> that? You told us it was her. Then you went and married it's somebody true, else that true, think like though. a man. Like, That's what are you truth. talking about? They just, they think they can rewrite history. The, uh, uh, Guy Tory did a beautiful special about the comedy store and Fat Tuesday, where he said that Steve and Cedric and Kevin Hart and Tiffany Haddish came through there and made all lies. Steve and Cedric never performed at the comedy store at all. Tiffany was only seen at the Laugh Factory. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy he club. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to LA and in his first year in LA, he had his own sitcom on network television and had his own movie called also playing that he was leading. No, we've never heard of that before that person or since that person. What do you think a plant is? <laughs> Maybe people don't understand the mm, definition. Uh, industry plant? That was. That's nah, that can't be true because he's naturally funny. Well, the thing nah, about it is that it's, it's still it's a business. And again, Cat Williams explains and he tells it from his side. From his vantage point, from his viewpoint, I'm not. I'm not saying that he's a, a lie. I'm not even saying that he's wrong. I'm saying if that's how he's, it, 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 it's like the Gospels. It's the same story. It's just told through uh, different lens. And so Cat sees it one way, and other folk obviously see it another way. Now, when it comes down to the downright lies and all that stuff, I can't decipher because I'm not in that business. So, so as as. As consumers, as as people who watch what's going down, the only thing that we can do is 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 judge what we see. And at the end of the day, I just cat comes across as, as believable and viable. At the same time, I, I'm not gonna rock with everything that he says because I don't agree with everything that, that he said that he said thus far with this. But I do like cat as a comedian. The one thing, well, we'll get into that if it comes up. These words. He just did his documentary yeah, with Chris. I'm getting a thumbnail made right now. That's why I'm. You just disrespectful. Huh? You just disrespectful. No, I'm listening. I'm just getting a thumbnail made. <laughs> <clears throat> Rock, where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. Yeah, it was. So, how simultaneously was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It did happen. It didn't happen. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies, but Jussie Smollett going to keep lying until you say we don't believe you. Wow. Like it's important in the checks and balances of the universe that liars not get to make complete narratives for themselves. Are you not afraid about being blackballed again? Mm, These are some powerful people. Okay. What do you mean again? These people are not powerful. Satan can't create anything. That includes blessings for his people. That's why, no you know what the waiting. number one job of somebody that sold their soul in Hollywood is? What? Is to act like it didn't happen. They all do the same job. Why do you think Gary Owen can't cross over and he already white and been in comedy mm. for 25 years? If what I say Owen's ain't the case. Too. It's a cabal. It's a it's a consortium. Yeah, Tony Rock. They and they Dion rock Cole. with who they rock with, and they don't with who they don't. But I'm not scared of being the competition any more than you were when you lined up uh, uh, across from a superior team. Yeah, on paper they're a better team. Right. They have all the assets and resources, and we don't. But let us get on the line, boy, boy, and see if that factors in. I, I guarantee you, it won't. Wow. Because Shannon Sharp got to be a different person than that other person. Absolutely. And he always was. That doesn't change when I change teams. That remains the mm -hmm. same. That's how a legacy is built. So all of these shortcut takers, mm. I, I was, they canceled me for talking about Harvey Weinstein before the thing came out. But he offered to suck my penis yeah, in front of all my people what? at my agency. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? What? He did all of that. I'm thinking I'm the only black person on the script. I get there. It's three other black guys on there. Woo. Huh. So you wonder what they <laughs> did to get there. <laughs> I told him no. What y'all do? So we are <laughs> <laughs> And this is why when I walk in a room, heads go down. 
Behind my so back, I'm nothing. Hollywood. I'm just a regular old comedian that's bitter and jealous. That's what we're doing to get moving. But though. in my face, no, no, no. The king has walked in and they have to respect it only because I've not taken the shortcuts. Mm. I've not been funded. They pay you to not talk about things they don't want you to talk about. They tell you that themselves. I can't do that because I. Uh, Steve told you that he stopped doing stand up because he has seven TV shows. The only problem is when he stopped stand up, he didn't have those seven TV shows. He stopped stand up because he got in a comedy battle called the Championship of Stand Up Comedy with one Cat Williams in Detroit in front of 10,000 people and lost because Cat Williams said he was actually bald and that was a wig. And uh -huh. I went in and that's why he couldn't okay, do stand up anymore. Do you know what he's talking about with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cat Williams and Steve Harvey had a had basically had a beef and they had a comedy duel. Cat had seemed to take exception to the fact that Steve Harvey had gone out on tour with the with the uh, Kings of Comedy and they called themselves a king and mm -hmm. he took exception to that and he spoke on it this that and the other. So him and Steve ended up going into this show where where they had a comedian challenge, if you will. Yeah. And what ended up happening is that, I, and, and I saw it. Now, there's some people. It's like there's a different brand of comedy for some. For some, it's it's like a raw roast, and that's what that turned out to be. It wasn't a comedy show. It was a roast because it almost seemed like Cat took that and. I just, I dare say, it, it, it felt borderline disrespectful to me. Um, that's my opinion of it. Uh, and Cat went into it, it almost seemed like from a bitter vantage point. So it was hard for me to fully rock with the show. There were some funny parts to it. However, it just didn't seem like comedy. It seemed like, like, like it turned darker, at least for me again. And so, so I don't, I don't fully, fully get with that whole thing. But um, uh, a lot of people really love what Cat did with it, and that's fine. A lot of people like what Steve did, did, did with it, and that's fine as well. But I was just looking at comedy for, for the sake of being able to admire what's going down instead of necessarily taking a side, because I don't like to see black men fighting against black men. Cat, Cat touched on that as well when, when he talked about uh, right versus wrong, and, I, and I'm. Fully with that. I just don't like to see us engaging in stuff that we don't have to. Imagine him coming to tell you another story where he got so big and it was Bernie and them's fault because they wanted to be movie stars. What? You called Ocean Eleven mm. to get that nigga's part. What do you mean you didn't want to be a movie star? So on the behalf of Bernie, I, I would have to say what I have to say. Have you have ever been? On, have you ever been on tour with any of these guys? The guy, I, every guy I mentioned to you is not funny out there. It's not answering the life. question, though. No. Okay. So, so you, no. Faison's never done his own tour in thirty years. Steve Harvey don't do stand up no more. Cedric doesn't write. I'm sorry, he doesn't write. Ricky Smiley has been playing the same old black mm. woman forever. Like, you can't get a young fan base <laughs> with that. Like, you got to be doing karaoke around the country to make that work. Right. And he is. But I'm a stand-up comedian. This is my 19th 100-city tour. I'm not going to have a conversation with these lazy bums that'll take a shortcut at any point. Yes, it's easier for you to juice than to get in the gym, but you don't get to bring that body in here talking mm. crazy. Talk about how good you look. What? No, no, there's too many w comics out there that are putting their life on the line to tell these jokes, man. Okay, let's get to your upbringing. We're going to circle back and we'll get some... Uh -huh. I want to protect him real quick because you had said for the Kings of Comedy, it was in 2018, 2019, but did you mean 1999? Because it came out in 2000. So he didn't say Kings of Comedy. No, no, no. So what I meant to say was, remember, he said, I couldn't do stand up anymore. I had seven TV shows. I said he didn't have any of those TV shows at the time. I know, you talking about Cedric. Joke stealer from 
Cedric. Yeah, Cedric. Oh, okay. So you so, have said that okay. 2018, 2019, but it came out in 2000, so I just want to make sure. You- okay, no, 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 no. No. What comes out in 2000? The, King- the original Kings of Comedy. Right. My, I'm on BET's Comic View, and they're using this as the commercial in 1998. Okay. That's why I'm saying, yeah. So, so if I, right. yeah. so if I yeah. said the date's so, wrong, just, just, yeah. So, yes. you, let's go ahead and clear that up. Okay. You said, yeah. I had Cedric on here, and I asked him about the joke stealing, and yeah. he said the timeline doesn't add up. Correct. To your to to that point, you say. Right. So he thought that I was just a no name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Right. The issue was that I had already done this particular joke on BET's Comic View twice. Right. It had done so well on BET's Comic View that they had made it part of the commercial. So part of the commercial of make sure you tune in to BET was you seeing me doing this joke. Right. And this joke is one of those jokes in comedy where you set it up and it takes a little longer to set it up. It takes about three minutes. But then you're just hitting them with jokes after right. that because you don't have to set it up. Right. Uh, Mark Curry had already helped me work on this joke because I thought it was good because I was getting a standing ovation on it. He had me go back in the lab and help me craft it to be an even more powerful joke. So this is not just a random joke. This is my very best joke, mm-hmm. and it's my last joke, and it's my closing joke. Okay. 1998, I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the Kings of Comedy and he's doing it verbatim. He's just changed my car into a spaceship. Him and Steve had already apologized for me, so I gave him a pass for a decade. Wow. Why would you sit here and be like, I talked to, I saw Cat 30 times, <laughs> and Cat didn't do, as I stand before you, Shannon. I would have bust Cedric's stomach. <laughs> there was nothing that would have kept me from one of these in, in that patch right there. Like, are you kidding me? Why would you downplay me like that? Why did I give you a pass if you were just going to lie? And so that's what I'm saying. Like, they're all a group. Cedric, Steve, Ricky, they've been a group. Everybody knows that. They've been aligned. And, and there are these alliances in comedy. And if you I've stand against them, then they that. sometimes have a problem. But... We don't let that change the content because that's all you know me for is that I'm quite likely to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Can you believe we're this deep into the NFL season? We got to bet on your favorite teams for a shot at winning big bucks in matchup. Down to the book. Ohio, raised in Dayton, Ohio. What was Cat Williams' upbringing like? Your parents were Jehovah Witness. You were a, a prodigy. You were brilliant. You talked to me that you got accepted to college at seven years of age. You could read fluently at three years of age. So having that kind of knowledge, having that kind of a uh, 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 of, of, of prodigy, or so what was so? I mean, was it? What was your upbringing? How how was it? How was life as Cat Williams crunk coming up? Um, I. I I was often confused because I knew things and I wasn't sure how I knew them. Um, I knew things that I felt like I don't have a reason that I I know this, but I I loved to read. Um, I was voracious because they told me when I was young that knowledge was powerful, uh, that knowledge was power, and I, and I had studied powerful people, and I I um, I really believed that. I I, I immediately. My next project was to read the whole encyclopedia wow. set. So when you're like six, seven years old, wow. you read the whole encyclopedia set. You think you're wow. one of the smartest people in the world, but only to get out in the world and find out you don't I know anything. The you know, so world it um, encyclopedia set. It was a As it was a, a kid, confusing but time, but yeah, I, was I had a childhood. World, I was I was grown, but I, I at five years old, I was in front of five, ten thousand people giving <clears> a performance with a full suit and tie on, you know what I mean? So yeah. it hasn't, it had, it, it, it came full circle 
um, for my life. I knew that the applause and um, the giving of information and laughs and truth to people somehow benefited them and also benefited you. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so when they would ask me what I wanted to be, everything that I would say that I wanted to be was something that didn't exist. And they would never give me credit for it because I needed to say uh, a doctor or a lawyer. lawyer, but that's not what I wanted to be. So your parents weren't as supportive as you would have hoped because you were wanting to be things when you got older that they had no knowledge of or it didn't exist at the time. No, it, it wasn't that. It, it was, um, I'm saying I'm... <clears throat> I'm almost 100 years old right now, but if we go outside right now, I can run a 4340 or, or a sub. I can do a 416 if I'm Oh, there's Jimmy John's across the street. We can order a sub. <laughs> but, um, oh, you've been on the submarine. That what you sub? So, um, so back then, it was even greater. So you got this He's guy that at. all the coaches want to play. Man, Cass, don't do that. Hold on, because I'm... I'm five foot five in the fifth grade. I've been this high my whole <laughs> life. Like there was a portion of school where I was one of the big dudes. Like it just, as soon as everybody caught their growth spurt, I was out of there. But I, I'm, I'm saying I was a competitive individual. Mm -hmm. My father was an athlete. I can see that. Like, 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 no, I've been 145 pounds my whole career. That's why I never bothered when they said, you cats on drugs. I knew, how you gonna prove that? <laughs> my body is a temple. I've been, I've been the same size since I was 10. <laughs> like, what do you, yeah, like, I, I, ha, I, haven't ch I haven't changed off this pivot foot. This has always been who I was before stand-up or anything. But it was, a, um, it was an interesting childhood. I, I, I appreciate my parents, even though um, I couldn't live within the religious frameworks of right. what they had set up. Um, but that was more not wanting to live a double life and not want to embarrass my family. You know what I mean? Because I read where a form of punishment for you is that they would take books because you ah. mentioned you were such a voracious reader. And a form of punishment it was when they would they take the books for them because you could read fluently. You, you, you told me how at like three or four years old, you could read, 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 not, not just a, a little child's book, but you could read, read. Well, I'm saying when we when we go to Haiti to do missionary work, understand that my mother and my father, nobody that's there with us speaks French. And I mean, it speaks Creole and reads French. So I'm in charge of everything from the housing to the cars to the, the gardener like I. I'm saying, so I'm not just reading. I'm reading in multiple languages. Like I'm probably, How old are you I'm probably reading 3,000 wow. books a year from the time that I'm He's eight years 3, old to the time that I'm 12. 3,000? No, no, no fiction books at all. I'm only reading nonfiction. Mm, that's a lot of books. You could drive at 12. You received a full scholarship to the National Science Academy in Dayton, Ohio. But you failed, so you couldn't become, so you would become ineligible. Why didn't you want to take that opportunity? I didn't see it as an opportunity. When I got in there, all the students were wearing lab coats, and it seemed very confined and restricted, and nobody seemed like they were having fun. It just seemed like everybody was smart. I, I didn't want that. That, was, that wasn't what I was signing up for at all. And plus, um, I thought that I was. I, Jesus was my big homie. So you know how you get a story about a dude joined the gang and you get a big homie, right? Like, mm -hmm. like at this particular point in my life, I'm my thought is that the Bible is the greatest book that's ever been written. Okay. Right. That it houses Muslim the truth like that too. and that it gives you this mm -hmm. story of Jesus and that I'm supposed to be like him. Okay. So I, it's already in my head that as soon as I get 13, I'm leaving. You 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 at 13, you not only leave like, okay, mom, I'm moving out. You moved from Ohio to Whoa. Florida on your own. You weren't afraid. I mean, you like, did you? No, hold did, on. Hold did you on. not don't, have a, don't, what, so what don't. were you going to So what were you going to do when you got to Florida? Don't say I wasn't afraid. There's no such thing as a human being of not being afraid. Okay. There are certain human beings that understand that being afraid in no way stops you from doing what you got to do. Okay. So um, I, w I was afraid, um, but 
I couldn't be that afraid because I knew what had happened with Jesus. I knew how it worked out. I, I, I knew that I wasn't in the wrong with how I was feeling, and I knew that I, I didn't have any bad intentions in it. Right. So I trusted God that it would work. <coughs> Why Florida? Um, because I, if you're raised in Ohio, the one thing on your list is, I'm gonna get away from snow, <laughs> and I'm gonna get as far, I wanna go, tell me the place. I literally went to a truck stop and I asked all the truck drivers where they was going. And it was one guy going to California and it was one guy going to Florida. And they told me how long it was gonna take. And so that's why I ended up in Miami. Because. How you get there? You caught a bus? Or no, I just told you. I was at the truck stop. I, so he you let hitchhike? Me, I got in. I didn't hitchhike. I got in the back of the dude's 18 wheeler, me and my Rottweiler puppy and my suitcase. <laughs> yeah, because I was. I probably had twenty five hundred dollars on me. Like I, you like I was you shoveling snow time. and cool. cutting grass. Like I always had pockets of money. When did you make the decision that you were gonna leave Ohio and go somewhere? Old, and it bro. ended up being Florida. So, but when did you know that you were leaving Dayton, Ohio, going to Florida? And my father and I's last interaction. Um, Somebody could have not made it. And we both understood mm. that was all bad. What was the disagreement about? Um, if, if you say that my family is very religious, let just say I'm not. <clears throat> so anything that I, I'm going to do is not is going to fall out of the guidelines. Right. But I'm not going to let you tell me what I'm going to be, even Especially if what you're saying is wrong. I can't condone wrong. And if I find out that something is wrong and I tell you it's wrong and you don't back me, that's so, what it is. Even as a young child, you were willing to tell your parents that some of the things that you're saying doesn't coincide with what I've been reading in, in, in the Bible. No, no. Very simply, don't. Don't try to disfellowship me for sexual acts and I'm a virgin. Hmm. Sorry, God, don't make mistakes. You don't get two times to fuck me over. What do you mean you went to God and he told you I was guilty? <laughs> you just lied on God. So long. That's it. There's no conversation. Deuces. That's so that, what it was. That's when you made the decision. After yes. that conversation right there, you say, no, nah, I, can't, I can't live under this roof. It wasn't a conversation. It was an altercation. In the altercation, I love my father. My father loved me. But we are two men at it. That, it'll never be the same again. You can't sleep comfortably around me. And I can't sleep comfortably around you. How similar are you to your father? No, um, I don't. I don't know. He's a great man. I, I'm, I'm saying because uh, it seems like y'all butt he y'all butted heads. Right, but I'm saying that generally happens with a father son dynamic. It was just that um, religious relationships are always difficult right. in families. What do you say to that? Well, uh, yeah, that's true. Do you think we butt heads or we butt yeah, heads? Yes. Behind religion? Oh no, not behind religion though. We we bumped heads because you was a knucklehead. No, that's why we bumped heads. Why? I don't even want it. It's, it's Say it. Uh uh. <laughs> Our interview gonna be three hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, okay. Give me the short version. It was just I didn't. Then no, come on. Do you think we both hands out? Yeah, that yeah. is yes, yeah, father and son. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, th I think there's gonna be natural head bumping. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Up. I'm not talking about nothing like nothing too serious like religion okay. or okay. nah. I ain't saying that. It's right. still crazy though. Before it got to the <laughs> point, <get> on. <laughs> because the dynamic, he's father, your son. Before that dynamic, and you step up on his level and you challenge him, you felt it was best for you to leave. No, no, no. I'm not being challenged. I'm being beat to death. Oh, he was abusive. I didn't say that. I said we were in an altercation. Oh, <laughs> I see what you did there. I saw what you did there. I saw what you did there, cat. Yeah. I saw what you did. You was in an altercation. You didn't say you lost. You said you was in an altercation. 
I in no so way did. gave you the impression that so I won did. anything. I'm the one leaving. I'm out of bounds. This his house. Right. Yeah, yeah. You, so you, as long as I'm going to be under his roof, you there are certain father. things that I'm going to have to do. Right. And the only way that's going to change is either mm. this or that. Right. And I, I, I'm saying I had two younger brothers. Like, I'm not... I'm not an unreasonable person. Like, I don't have any mental issues whatsoever, ah, despite okay. what they lead people to believe. You know, I make good, pretty good decisions. Were you not, uh, so how was their relationship with your father? Were you not afraid to leave them? be afraid to leave, yeah. Well, I asked because it, it went all the way to the actual department, so it was actually gonna be something. Um, and when I asked them if, they could just make sure that my brothers didn't get separated and what so have you. Um, they said they couldn't make those type of guarantees, that they weren't really sure what would happen if this went down. And so part of leaving was the hope that it would be okay for them. I'll because be none, none of them experienced what I experienced, okay. I'm saying. Okay, there was a movie done about Richard Pryor called Jojo Dancer, Your Life is Calling. Mm -hmm. I would like to see something like that done with Cat, where whereby he sanctioned it, um, because I, I wouldn't want somebody else telling a false story about him. I just I find him interesting, though. Know? And I'm the oldest. It's a lot riding on me. Right. I'm supposed to at least religiously hold down the family's name Correct. at this household. Right. You know what I mean? How much older are you than the baby and the knee baby? Like a lot older. Like I, if I'm. I 12, think, 13. Think, yeah, they're five. And in Pampers. Wow. You go to Florida. You tell the story. I've heard you, t you were homeless. And right. somebody else told the story, said they were homeless. And you said they... They hijacked your story. Now I don't. Hey, I don't. At thirteen, I shouldn't have to tell you I'm homeless. I'm in a. I'm, I'm in Miami, Florida. I have no family members in Florida. I could not uh, buy Martin? a house if I, I think, wanted. That, I think that 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 is the insinuation. Yeah. It too. I couldn't get an apartment if I wanted Correct. to. I don't have a credit history like. This is not a stretch for me to say that I'm homeless. I'm living in a park in Coconut Grove. The park still exists to this day. Mm -hmm. For eight hours a day, I would get up and go to the library and study for eight hours a day to increase my education. And then I would leave out of there and go to the marina and steal mm -hmm. car radios and make $2,000 mm -hmm. almost daily. Like, I had a routine. This so you really could have played that Santa old thief in Santa Claus. You could have played him. Right now. No, the Santa Claus wasn't a thief. The Santa, yeah, he was. He the told. Santa Claus, you can't tell me. I read the script. Ricky Smiley told you he didn't read the script. The, the Santa Claus was a crackhead. He just had that outfit on. That's what I couldn't have played. Okay. Like, I couldn't have played a black guy that got raped in the bathroom. Right. So at any point in time, you're like, man, I made a mistake, man. I should have stayed my butt in Ohio, man, because this is, man, this ain't what I signed up for. I didn't experience anything once I left home that I hadn't signed up for. If anything, it saved my life. Me being homeless for that small period of time allowed me to see all of the people that were in that situation and to see that these were lawyers and doctors and, 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 and teachers and that these people were white and black and Asian and Indian. And the only thing that all of these homeless people had in, in, in common was um, they made a bad decision and aligned themselves with drugs. And I interviewed them all. What drug? What? And guess what, Shannon? What? Nobody had a great story. Nobody had a great story of what meth had done for them, what crack had done for them, what cocaine had done for them, what My heroin had cracking. done for them, what speed had done for them. Nobody had them stories. Everybody's story was, I had my life together. Wow. And then I decided to do this dumb thing. And I wow. lost my wife. I lost my house. I lost my cars. I lost my reputation. And I'm now out here sucking penis. 
in the woods. What? Talk about scared straight. You ain't got to worry about me. If it ain't weed or nicotine, you won't see me touching it. I don't want no parts. I done seen what these things can do to people. Anything that yeah, take over your free will is yeah. the devil itself. Have That's you ever thought of- Ooh, he's mad. My headphone is cracking though. About what your life charged. would have been had you stayed mm -hmm. in Dayton, I, Ohio? I don't mind it's charged up a little. I'm, I'm starting to hear some, some cracking and stuff in it. What's this? No. It's coming from, from, from off of here. I think the battery's not charged up. No, that, that's like asking somebody that's in the NBA for 14 years, like, what would have happened if you didn't come to the NBA? Oh, I shudder to think. I, I, I thought it was what I was made for. I thought it was what I was built for. Anybody that knows me will tell you that when they first met Cat Williams, when I was Cat in the Hat, and they tell these stories about how he changed his name. Look, the truth of the matter is Disney sued me. Yeah, I was Cat in the Hat. They sent me a cease and desist letter, and I'm not even making $25,000 a year. And the mega company, Disney, has sent me a cease and desist telling me I can't use any variations of that name. Fine. I'm Cat Williams. That's all that happens. I have been this same product the entire time. They will tell you when they first saw me doing stand-up, I was just like this. This is what I bring. Hmm. This is my style. When did it, when did you know you was going, you wanted, were you always funny? Did you always want to be a comedian? How, no. Did you stumble on a comedian ship? No, I, I, I loved what they did. And so I studied them, all of them. I studied all of the white comedians because I wanted to know why is Monty Python funny? Why is Don not so talented? I wanted to know what is George mm. Carlin's thing like? You know any of them so you? I studied wow. all of the comedy masters, regardless of the field, were they funny? because I loved huh? were they to funny? laugh. Some of them, yeah. I didn't know that these people were making a great living at doing this. It's like, it's like I thought this is just what they did. Of, they like the folk that he's mentioning, I know that. Mm -hmm. And so it trips me out because as a parent, you can... You almost assume that your child knows some of the same stuff that you yeah. that you know. It's like you forget that y'all don't know. Don't. So when we do stuff like this, it's a trip to me because I know for one, you're being educated, but at the same time, when I come into your area, I'm learning stuff uh, about y'all that trip me out. That makes sense. No jokes. They're funny people. But I loved the craft. And that's why when I got into the craft, I thought it was my obligation to make sure that I kept writing new material so much that it forced these comedians to stop doing the set they've been doing for 10 years and keep writing some new stuff. And I knew that if I could get that to take on, that most of these bums would have to just quit comedy because they can't yeah. keep up. They're not going to keep writing an hour worth of material. Right. I've written an hour worth of material 19 times. They're not going to do it. Why? Because they're not creative writers. They want to get somebody else and have them write it and Facts. put it together. So, so if I'm listening to you correct, correct me if I'm wrong. I think the best thing that ever happened was the Internet. Because now they have to. Because you normally, cheat. like you said, you could do a set and... You do that, do that, no, that set in Kansas City. Time. People ain't heard it in San Francisco. People ain't heard it in Miami. They ain't heard it in Detroit, Chicago, Atlanta, so forth and so on. Now you do a set, it's on the internet. Somebody heard it. So you can't do a set and make it, make it last three you months, can, four months. But you can't, you can't market well, it the same. It, it doesn't allow the regular comic the ability to grow is the real problem. Like the part of comedy is me taking these jokes 
in January, and by March, I've begun to craft this joke. Okay. It's not as simple as it was. When I wrote it, it was just da-da-da-da-da. But now it has the complexities of the fact that I'm having to deliver this to an East Coast audience, a Down South audience, a Midwest audience, a Utah audience, a Colorado audience. And so it begins to take on a different complexion because you're having to deliver it to different people. Okay. And so this is what sharpens your joke. You then take those sharpened jokes and make a special. Not you just randomly take some. Mm -hmm. So it's a process. You don't allow them the process if the first time the guy did the joke, now that's his joke and the joke is everywhere. That just sets it up for people to steal. So how many times must you tell a joke before you master it? How many times have you had to sleep with a woman before you done with her? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's not fair. If it's great, never. <laughs> if, if, it, it, if it ceases to have usefulness, so it has been spoken. That was right. deep. I, was, I, I read that you was raised in, in, in Florida. You had some, some help, some ladies of the night. No, 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 no. That's not true. No, that whole story doesn't take place in Florida. That story takes place in Oklahoma City. Okay. So after I'm in Florida, I then join, um, I try to join the Marine Corps and it won't accept me because I'm, right, too, I'm, too, I'm, I'm too young and I've lied and told them I'm 16 and my family's moving down and I don't have my ID, but it's coming. And so they let me go to the boot camp. Da, da, da. That's not going to work now. Okay. So I've learned that lesson. Was so then I get this job selling Diego. stuff door to door. Um, across the country. And so I've been to all 50 states. Again, I'm 13, 14 years old. Um, so I did that. At, while I'm doing that, one of the places I'm at, I'm in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. And I've decided I'm going to stay here because of meeting these ladies that you're talking about mm -hmm. and that situation. I don't know at the time why that's important in my life or why it's something I should be doing or any of that. But now later on, it certainly helps me in formulating Money Mike for Friday After Next. Right. And a pimp named Slickback uh, for the Boondocks. San Francisco, you, Oklahoma, so San Francisco, Oklahoma, Sacramento. From Florida, you moved to the West Coast. After, so you traveling. When did you set up shop on the West Coast? All How right. old were you then? So I, I guess I'm... Uh, 18 or younger, and I, um, once I have my, once I have a child, I realize that, um, I can't, it's a lot of things that I could use to make money that now is a no-go. So anything with street aspirations that I might have thought about pursuing or been good at, um, I now am a single parent and I got to redo this thing. So I need comedy to really work out for me right. and me and God go into um, extreme conversation where I'm explaining to him that I'm a crash out dummy if he don't send me a lifeline. Like I need something I can hold on to. Before I had left Florida, I did stand up one time because we was trying to get in the club. I didn't have ID. So I said I was a comedian. They ended up having me do five minutes. But I kept that in my head that I had done that. When we get to Oklahoma, they're having a competition for stand-up. And if you win, you get to go out on the road with uh, Jeff Foxworthy and Dan Whitney, who is Larry the Cable Guy, and Richard Jenny, and these great comics. You get to open for them. And once I did that, I realized, okay, as a comedian, I'm like way behind schedule. I done started this too late. All the funny guys are already funny and known names. Never like, too late. How am I going to progress? So I realized that I, I, I do better with a white audience than I do with a black audience. And I, I'm not sure why that's occurring, okay. but the white audience likes me more. That's, that's interesting. So when I moved to Sacramento, it's because Sacramento has a white 
and a black audience almost 50 mm -hmm. 50 that's okay. almost the I makeup that of sacramento fact. so i live in sacramento for two years until i get to the point where i am equally as funny if the room is black as i am if the room is white okay that's not enough now I need to be one of the good ones when it comes to black comics. Mm -hmm. So now I have to move to Oakland and that's what lands me in Oakland for three years. Once I have dominated uh, male black comedy in Oakland to my liking, now I'm prepared to go to Los Angeles now. Now I know you can't throw me any curveballs. If it's a white audience, if it's a black audience, no matter what they are, I'm prepared to deal with all of the audiences. Do so you write jokes according to the audience question. that you're gonna be in yeah. front of? Or, yeah. uh, or is your joke universal? Well, in, in the beginning, I part of my framework is that I'm tailoring every show to this audience. Okay. And that's how I was able to show my range and show that I was better than my competitors, is that I'm Cat Williams, but I was still doing clean comedy. So I was still going to churches and doing 45 minutes of stand up at the church with no curse words, no sex drug material, no none of that, just straight stand up. And then I was doing everything else. And I- At the regular club. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the range is that where, <laughs> When in Rome, do as the Romans do. So um, that's how I started. Um, but as you begin to get better, you begin to be able to speak to your entire fan base. And that's really what's been helpful is that I've been having the same conversation with my fan base I love that. for 12 comedy specials. Is that so. what set Cat Williams apart? Is your range? is that you can do a comedy, do 45 minutes in the church. I can go to a comedy club in front of 250, or I can go into an arena with 15,000. Um, that's range, because everybody can't do that, Cat. Well, if that's what range is called, then, then, then yeah, it's range. But I, I like the people I'm talking to. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it's not, it's not like, um, it can't be condescending because I'm talking to my white male friend when I'm telling that white joke. Right. When I'm talking about this joke about this black lady, I know that black lady. That's who I'm talking to. I'm 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 speaking to this fan base that I've been speaking to from the beginning. I already wow. told them what I was on when I first came in. I told them they was going to come after me. They was going to cancel me. They was going to say terrible things about me and try to mess my life up. I I said that coming into stand up. I'm I'm saying it in my So you face. knew what it was going to be? It has to be. I know I'm going into the belly of the beast. How could I be naive? I know that I'm going into Satan's playground, but I'm trying to be so good that you got to bring me in so close mm -hmm. that I can see who's doing what and what's going on in there. In San Francisco, you joined the nation. Okay. I was ever in San Francisco. I was in Oakland. You was in Oakland. Did you join the nation? Is that... Yeah, Minister, Honorable See, Minister Farrakhan okay. and I have um, an extremely close relationship. He, he refers to me but I'll uh, say this too. as one of his sons. Farrakhan, so, um, that is a... He's a prince of a man. That dude, I don't agree... I don't agree with his theology. Um... As far as all aspects, but everything that I've seen, that is a gracious, gracious man. And I have I have the utmost respect for him. I appreciate for what he stands for, uh, for what he tries to accomplish, for what he promotes and pushes. And, you know, it just is what it is. You'll run across people in life that you may not agree with everything that they say per se. Uh, but at the end of the day, you can still respect them because you recognize the fact that they are operating authentically in their lane and doing the best that they know how to do. And it comes from a genuine place. So you got to respect that. Yeah, I, I spent a particular period of time. Let me explain. Yes. Because my particular background was already religious mm -hmm. and super strict. 
right? I didn't find out about other religions by reading about them. I went to their religion. I, I, I don't want to learn from Jewish people from outside. I want to be in a synagogue. I want to, I, I don't want to learn about Muslim people from out. I, I want to be in a mosque. Church. I, I, I don't want to yeah. hear about the Baptist or the Pentecostal. I want to go to their church okay. and see. And so that was the religious discovery that I was on through that period in my life. Mm, that's a good one. Chris. When did you that's, know you were funny? That's, that, that's a common question, but it's always interesting per comedian. Mm, probably. Um, <laughs> he said 10 years ago. About 10 years ago. Like, 10 years ago. Please. Yeah, about 10 years ago. So you didn't think so you didn't think as a child because obviously you said the very structured background your family is, was very religious. So obviously you didn't get an opportunity. Um and I, I mean, yeah, like I never did a talent show. I was okay. never in any, any extracurricular activities. I was never in drama. I was never in band camp. I was never a boy scout. And like, you didn't stay in school like, long enough to get funny because you dropped. You understand. You understand. <laughs> so there was no, like, I don't. <laughs> I, I don't tolerate high school games. I didn't go to high school. I don't. I don't know how most of the games they think I play. I'm not even aware of them. But I, but. Cap, for you to get on stage, and yeah. like I said, a lot of people, like a lot of comedians that I had a few here, yeah. they're like, okay, you know, I told jokes to get girls, I told jokes to, you know, get people to laugh at someone else. Yeah. But you, it's like, at, you say you did comedy one time in Florida. Yeah. And you had this other opportunity, to, like in Oklahoma, that they were going to take you out if you won the talent show, you was going to go on the road with these, these well-known comedians. And I did. But I'm just saying how at, in Florida at 13, 14 years of age, you're like, 16, I can do that. Well, because I knew that there were a lot of other things I could do. Like <laughs> when I looked at drug dealers, I thought I could do that. Yeah. You but that's easy. So I, right. And who doesn't like that? <laughs> right. Huh? Yeah. I, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to make it. But now that I got to do it on this side, I, I, but no, you, your question was, when did I think I was funny? Mm. I never was my biggest fan. I, to this day, I'm not the biggest fan. I'm a fan of comedy. I like great comedians. Like, I like Chappelle. I like Patrice O'Neill. Like, I like the greats of comedy Dave because Chappelle I do. Like, I, I like Man, Ron White. I like Bill Ingle. Like I Dave know Chappelle. comics. Like Chappelle people that genius. did the craft. They raised me. I was touring with Steve Marmel and Richard Jenny and real journeymen. Mm -hmm. So my comedy upbringing was standard. I thought you had to work all night, every night, all around the country, and you had to write jokes, and that you were trying to write jokes that it. other people weren't writing, and that your job was to be funnier. Like, I, it, people that know me will tell you, I've been on this. Like, I, I had a list of all the black comedians that were more famous than me. There was 300 of them on the list, and I had to be able to cross them all out before I could make it to the next level before I felt like I was funny enough to do that. that. And so I That's mindset. I I, I appreciate what competition does for sports. And it's growth for my mindset. particular sport. And, and comedy is a sport. What gave you the confidence that you could get on stage? You remember I was five years old on stage. Okay. The, so I, but I was, in front of people with no was, problem. But I was reiterating God's word at that point. Oh. Now, I just have to make sure that the content is good. If the content is good, ah. what part can I not do? I'm a vessel. He's given me these gifts to be able to do certain things. So I just want to utilize them in my craft. That's all. Do you remember your first set? Mm-hmm. How long? Five, ten minutes? No, no. Um, I, I think three minutes. Three minutes? Yeah. Standing ovation, booze, some applause, some jeers. No, none of that. They they applauded like I was a professional at it. But now looking back, I understand because you got to understand they were all thinking he don't even look old enough to be in here, and we don't have any black guys that live in this town. Right. Where did he come from? <laughs> and then he gets up there, and for three minutes he talk about the fact that he is the entire black community. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he is as disappointed in them. It looked like they looking for where the rest of them is. And so is he. And that was his set. But I understood from that point that wow. the truth is really the commodity and the fact that um, 
We That's are beautiful. all individuals and all separate and all our own islands, but not in real life. In real life, it's only five or six different types of people. Facts. And you're going to see them everywhere that you go. And all, like, all my enemies all look the same in the eyes, whether it's Faison, Wanda, Aries, Spears, they all look like. Man, what you got to give Wanda sight? <laughs> you think I don't remember that? Sir? Wanda Sykes and Wanda Smith are two separate people. I mean, Wanda I, Smith. Wanda and, Smith. And I Wanda, had only no, said Wanda one Sy name, sir. Wanda, Sy w I, Wanda, Wanda Sykes I'm is amazing. I love Wanda. And I agree. I love Wanda. That's I my agree. girl. Mine but I, well. I remember on the radio, oh, you went on the radio the, interview. If I'm not mistaken, that's in Atlanta. That was the, right. the uh, and I think that was you came on there with seemingly good yeah. intentions. Yeah. Her up. Yeah. He told her that she had the face for radio. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny. That wasn't yeah, funny. That was that. cruel. But that was funny though. That was I seen that it. was cruel. He said I did uh, laugh though. He said, uh, <laughs> we shouldn't be talking about uh waist size or something like what'd he say? He I don't remember what all he said, but I was, <laughs> when I watched it, I was just like, Whoo And oh, yeah. she attacked you. It wasn't just that part. It was the fact that before I go in there, no, he said, she has a conversation he about, said, okay, now. shouldn't be talking about sizes. I just want to talk to you because you just want it. <laughs> Emmy for the city of Atlanta, and this is in Atlanta, and they just want to hear about the Emmy and hear from you and to thank you for what you did putting the city on. Right. <laughs> and we won't talk about your kids. We won't talk about jail, no cases. We ain't going to talk about none of that. Right. And immediately gets in there and goes the opposite way. You can't flip up on me because you're an inferior comedian. I'm going to destroy you and I'm never going to call you out of your name. I'm never going to say anything disrespectful to people that look like you. I'm, I'm, it's a very thin line I got to call. <laughs> but this lady is trying to embarrass me in front of a largely homosexual fan base. That's why she got canceled. Gay people don't take it kindly that you, uh, as a derogatory, call me gay. Gay people don't feel like it's derogatory. So why are you trying to shame me with something in a community I don't even belong in? There's no gay people saying I belong over there or been over there. You did a but I have no hatred of over there, and how dare you? You did a number on it, though. Hey. You did a number on it. That, no, that's legendary. No, you either believe in karma or you don't. Because I didn't even know any of the stuff that she had done to my fellow comedians until afterwards. I just know she that it was a setup. Right. And and remember, they they tried to kill me this same weekend, not in jokes, with a real mm. gun in my real face on real camera. Understand, I'm losing my life for participating. And something that goes along with you know my about job. That? Like, it's two comedians. What do you mean? Kill him on camera. With and, and the world was he, okay with it. Well, he has expressed in different uh, different vantage points some of the stuff that he's been peppering uh, throughout this whole interview. I don't know about that particular incident, but I do I do recall a time when him saying that folk were, you know, were really trying to take his life. I don't mm -hmm. remember all the details, though. because it was me. Had that happened to anyone else, the world went crazy when Will smack, smacked Chris. This is a person pulling a whole gun on a comedian in the confines of their job. It's, a, it's really a weird situation uh, when they hate you that bad. Yeah. Yeah. You felt she hated you at that moment because you, you mentioned that she said it was going to be very professional. Oh, you want to end it? Congratulations. You put the city on. You own for the city. Yada, yada, yada. And now, what, did she mention anything about the Emmy on camera? <laughs> I believe you saw the video and you know that none of that took place. Took place. See, the, it, <laughs> the issue is that. Um, all the comedians have to come do these radio stations right. because you have to sell your tickets. And so that means you have to go to the radio station. Yes. I, I don't go to the radio station. and I don't make posts to sell tickets. I just don't. So you've not seen me. I'm, I haven't, I'm not here in some subservient position nope. where somebody sent me over. I'm, you hear out of the kindness of your heart. You are. No, no, I'm saying... 
in, no, but in no, the interview you, yeah, yeah, yes. situation. Yes. Yeah, yes. like, right. For sure. Yeah, and this person knew I wasn't there for that or, yeah, it's. But how hard, because you have to understand, she is a female. And so you have to be careful. You have to handle her with kid gloves. Sir, sir, <laughs> you want to go ahead and take that out? You don't want to be against equality, do you? No, no. What you just said was <laughs> very unequal, sir. Bruh, but I you think maybe you've had enough of this. <laughs> Because I think I just heard you say but can you, can that you, women are not equal and should be they, treated unequally. They and are, I, they want to be treated. You mean equal. as a comedian? No, no. They want. Listen, you understand, and I understand. Yeah. In certain situations, they want to be treated equal. Not all situations. <laughs> and well, and what part of what you saw her get? Oh, she what, deserved everything no, you no, gave her. What part would have been different if she was a man? It would have just been more vicious. Yeah, that, that's, that's my point. I that's took, my point. I took all the vicious and you venom away because it. I didn't have any. Plus, I understood. I'm not trying to offend black women with short hair. I'm not trying to offend heavyset women. I'm not trying to upset fellow comedians. I'm not trying to do any of that. And I can't. I am qualified to be able to do none of that and still eviscerate you because I'm I smart enough to know that I need to say that you have gnarled fingers because I know your limited education means you don't know what the word means. So you can't gnarled. possibly respond to it. You're not sure of the meaning. And I'm going to continue hitting you because this is what comedians do. Right. You've been masquerading that you're a comedian, too. And that's the fallacy. So and nobody in boxing fights out of their weight class. If you're a 130 pounder, you don't just show up with the 160 pounders. You stay in your weight class. Is that what you wanted to do? No. That she was out of her league when no. it came to because I she, didn't want to do any of it. I know you didn't want, didn't to, want to do it. But once she took it there. You did you feel that you had to go there? Oh, you go could where? Say, you could nah, say, Wanda, I didn't come here for that. I just want to do the interview. I just want to talk about what happened. Oh, you misunderstand my job. My <laughs> my job is to be funny. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! My job is to be funny first. My first job is to be funny. My yeah. second job is to be respectful. My third job is to be immaculate and Gaza strip it. Huh? Uh, That's non-political. I'm saying if you do it, you let a terrorist accidentally touch over here and I won't stop burning you down until there ain't nothing left. It'll literally be rubble on top of rubble and I'll still be bombing. Why? Because that's why you should mind your business. <laughs> this is what yes, sir. F yes, around and find out is about. Right. Yeah. Have you ever been booed, cat? Our, our gamble, yes. Um, yes. Yeah. I have. What was that feeling like? Did it like want to give up? Because we don't, I mean, because when you have, I mean, I don't know how early it was in your career. Obviously, it hadn't been in the, I don't think it's in the last decade because you've been immaculate. <laughs> Have you ever dropped a pass? I have. I've been booed too. You know the little segment between everything is fine and I got it, and then you noticing where it is now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that. Um, the thing about as a comedian, the audience's opinion is the only opinion wow. that matters, not you the writer, not none of that. And so I don't think any comedian has ever been booed unnecessarily mm. either. That's good. Uh, uh, <laughs> they they deserve it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying. What, what do they say when a guy shoots the air ball in the NBA? They say air ball right. to make sure everybody knows. But mm. again, he still got to get back on D. Right. Like the game didn't end. He don't get to throw his hands up and sulk. Right. That's supposed to be used as a learning experience. I I Most that. comedians don't get booed enough. Oh. I mean, this is how you end up with a Michael Blackson who's a real African doing a fake African accent. Okay, Mo, don't. Uh, 
This guy is mad at me. All I did was give him the best advice of his life. Remember, he was wearing dirty dashikis. Dashikis. And I told him he needed to dress to be in the position that he's trying to say that he's in. And if you're the African king of comedy, sir, there's actually comedians in Africa doing comedy. If you're going to say that, you got to go to Africa and get a school, dude. Everybody got you. You got to put in some work. Mm. And these guys, they take my advice. They change their whole persona. And... And then they hate me for it. And generally, I'm just too big to comment or make a statement about it or do a live or any of that. But when it gets to be a whole grouping of these guys, I got to come and talk to Shannon. <laughs> I got to lay it down at the altar. You know every comedian. This, is, this is the other side of Kirk Franklin prank. <laughs> This is the reckoning. 2024. The reckoning. You, you watch that. You know every comedian that's been on my show. You know you watched every episode. Cause no, you know, that's not what you said. You said I know every comedian. You know every comedian. You're you. limiting me. Oh, you watched every episode. Because you 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 know things. You know things. I that <laughs> That's always where I'm trying to come from, whether it's comedic or otherwise. That's why even if you see me get arrested 10 times in a row yep. on TV, yep. as a fan of mine, you can be like, he's going to be right out. <laughs> yeah, but they just say it. He didn't do it. He couldn't have. It's stupid. Why would he do something stupid knowing he got to come back and talk to us? Nah, they re they respect that every time it happens, I'm going to be free as a bird sitting out here talking to you about it. That it really was what I said it was. That's all. And see, stuff like this. You end up, you come you down, you're in L.A. Yes. Now, so well. I'm reading. Cat Williams won Cedric the Entertainers and Heiser Bush Best, L L Best Los Angeles Comic Award. Did you win that award, won Cat Williams? It's a simple yes or no. It's not a rhetorical question. It's a question that probably should have been asked to Cedric the Entertainer. I'm asking you. I got you here, though. I know. I couldn't <laughs> believe Cedric didn't get asked that question. <laughs> you still a dude's joking and giving an award, and then 10 years later, you don't know nothing about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but I, but I promise you this. What? If he sees me again before he sees you. He'll be talking different when you see him. That's for certain. That's the difference. That's what these comics understand, is that I'm not doing nothing for clout. I don't even recognize clout. But eventually, the Lord is going to let me and you be in one hallway. A lot of these dudes go. Kevin Hart done went 25 years without ever being in the same building with this me. This is what I was trying to hear. What, so what, if what, I go in the building, he walk out. You've never seen us in the same building ever um, in 25 comedians. years. To be honest, I, I bet he wouldn't even necessarily call it a beef. Now, whatever he has with Kevin, I know nothing of. I knew him. I knew they didn't like each other. I didn't know that they didn't like each other. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, yeah, okay. I knew that. Oh, no, no, no. I take that back. Yeah, I did. I have heard that. Like, it's like that. <laughs> Why? Why? Yes. Because what? I'm really the product. It's not what you think. I am never under the influence of anything. I'm always in my right mind. I'm always a physical specimen. And when you see me, I'm much, much bigger than you had thought. Mm. I have far less play in me than you would like. And I'm relentless. I'm out there. I'm still to this day. I play 11 games of basketball with a 20 year old. The record is 92 and six. This is just in the yard, just to the rack, just cause. You work out cat? I mean, no, you work out cat? Uh, not to the gym. You don't work out in the gym? You do push ups, sit ups? I my whole life it was um it was just push ups and sit ups only. I would do like um a hundred push ups a day. Just I thought you were gonna say a thousand. No, no, no. <laughs> because this is literally every day. Right. This is not for the yeah. 
for the gram. You know what I mean? Like uh, literally a hundred a day. And I would do push ups and then I tore both my rotator cuffs. And so it was only thanks to golf that I was even able to get my you a golfer now? back. I I've been a golfer for quite some time. My short game is impeccable. I I, I can't get you but but two and some change off of the um the off the tee, but I'm still I'm 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 still coming in for par guaranteed. Are you playing for the tips? Uh no, I've I've found that you don't get anything for that. <laughs> it seems like it seems very ego maniacal. They go, hey cat, for free you can go further back. <laughs> hey, what? Wait a minute, does it still count the same? Hey, I'm up at the ladies' tee. Don't tell me my pronouns. <laughs> <laughs> On the golf course, I'm she, her, him, them, and they. Whoever, whoever at the front tee. We're, I know we're joking, we're having a great conversation, but you did win the award. How did the award help your career? It had to help some, cat. Nope. No. Nope. Yeah, come on, cat. I didn't remember it. It happened to you. Just said it. Set, how can Cedric give you an award that was worth something? Everything Cedric and Ricky Smiley ever been in got canceled for not being funny. Ricky sat here and told you that they cut him out of every movie he did. They always had a reason. Like, <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> that's why I'm funny because I'm a happy person. I laugh all day long. Mm. I can't even imagine the misery of these bums. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Just to not be good at what you now, do, not work hard at what I you do, but have to act like you the best at what you do. Show. It is crazy. Uh, yes. And Ricky Smiley was was the headline. And he killed it. I don't know if he used somebody else's joke. Did he do the, uh, the old like black that? woman? The no, old. no, he didn't. It was it, it was straight straight uh, set, straight stand up, and he killed it. He killed it. Um, you know, it just is what it is. So, gotta give credit where it's due. I'm not saying that anything that Cat is saying about him is false, because I don't know. But I know that, that, that Ricky killed that show. It's great. But they be touring, they, they, they be doing like 100 shows a year? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't run into none of them. That's what I'm saying. If you a Phase I Love fan, you mean you've been a fan of him for 32 years, you still waiting on him to do his first special? You mean to tell me if Steve Harvey, your favorite comedian, you mean you've been waiting for him to do stand up for 15 years now? I mean, Steve got a, got a, a lot of other DL, DL still out there. None of those irons matter to stand up. Who cares that they wrote a placard for you to do Family Feud on? Like, you're. So you're successful because we're surprised you can talk for a living and it's entertaining that you're going to say some funny country things. But not a writer. Right. Not a writer. How did you develop Money Mike and get it? I mean, that, I mean, everybody talk Money Mike. Is, how? How did you come up with that and say, you know what? <laughs> this is how he should dress. This is how he should talk. This is how he should look. This is the kind of whip he should ride. This is how he should talk. So if you'll remember that that was my first movie, just understand that what I did then, I've done with every single role, whether it was an Emmy winning role or whether it wasn't, whether I was playing somebody homeless, whether I was playing a dirty vagabond on Atlanta, whether it was an eccentric guy in First Sunday, regardless of what the role is, the this first is thing I do is right erase now. me from it. Okay. This so anything that I would naturally I'm have to. I got to roll. I got to get to my meeting. That's what I've been texting. They do. Cats, mm -hmm. so. That's what I'm not going to do okay. because I'm playing a different character. You're playing the character. Okay. Right. So I then create this person based upon real life circumstances. So I don't have to wonder what a pimp thinks because I've been in that position for a little while. I also worked manual labor for some time in my life, so I don't have a problem paying somebody that works. And I don't have a problem uh, being a go-getter because I'm a go-getter. So I bring whatever I can to these characters. I was able to... Um, the first week that I got the script, there was a, 
a pimp guy that used to be a pimp, but he wasn't anymore. He was a rapper now, and his name was Mac Minister, and he um, had been a pimp and was going to be a rapper. And I had never done a movie before. I was a stand-up, and I'm getting ready to do the movie. And so I was able to craft what a real pimp was like, what was too much. I didn't want to be stereotypical. Right. I, I, I did the research. I saw how many times people played pimps, and they were always... It was always something weird about them, right. I guess, because it's a weird job, you know what I mean? Right. And I wanted somebody that didn't seem like none of that, that he really thought it was a business and treated it like that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, those adding those levels to acting is what all actors do if they're not Steve or Cedric or Ricky. Mm -hmm. Like you're trying to create a character. You don't you can't just be phase on in every movie like you just gonna take your shirt off on every movie like why does it say that in your script man let big worm live let him breathe cat let big, let, let, let big worm breathe let's call him out now You having an unnatural allegiance to losers is not like you. No, I ain't got no allegiance to the man. But you got to admit the role that he played, Big Wor I mean, Big Perm in Friday Night. You got to give him credit for the role. Now, come on now. Let me ask you a question. Yes. If what you're saying is correct, why wasn't nah. he in next Friday or Friday after next? Yes, I mean, his role, I mean. It wasn't he, good. <laughs> Sorry. There was a lot of people that didn't that appeared in the first one that weren't in the second one. Cat. I'm just telling you why. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it's a there's a Wait, news flash that there are reasons for Friday, things in a business. Friday. Yes. Oh, Friday. okay. Well, what would, would you? Why would you? Why, why did you bench d -Lo? He had two you. points. <laughs> what are you talking about? Shut <laughs> up. But I like him. Nobody you, cares about that. That's not what we're talking about. These are business conversations that deal with businessmen. Right. Friday, he was in Friday when you're day. good at something, you should progress. The guys that are not oh, as good, yes, they should fall Friday. down by the wayside. That's natural. There were the, so you believe if your talent doesn't support it, you should fall by the wayside, and the guys that have the talent and they get elevated, they should move. No, that's what water says. That's what the universe say. The universe say the levels. <laughs> the heavy, no, I don't. Not I say. Who am I? <laughs> I'm nobody. I, but I'm working every day, as if I think that's what should happen. Is how it should be, and I'm choosing comedians that also write and work hard and don't steal other people's material, and I'm making sure that they all make three hundred thousand dollars a, a season, and I'm making sure that they're not ever signed to me or my conglomerate, and that's why they're successful. No, you can work with me and still be an independent businessman, boss owner like you came in. Right. I don't need you to be subservient mm. to me. That's those other. Guys guys that make you pay dues. <laughs> you said earlier that you rewrote a lot of what Money Mike was to say and how he behaved. So they allowed you the, 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 the freedom, the liberty to add Leo. How much? Would they allow you to just make an interception if it didn't nobody talk about it? As a football player, if the ball comes your way, can you just grab it? Can you make an interception anytime? Are you allowed to pick up any fumble? Oh, uh, yeah. you, you can do any hustling, yeah. right? Oh, okay, same here. Same. same here. But here's the thing, though. Even as, a, even as an offensive player, yeah. they might let me add lib once I get a couple of years into my breath. They wouldn't let me add lib as a rookie. That was your first movie. I, I told you the conversation in my first movie just because I'm... I am committed to laughs. The only way I made it past those 300 comedians, I didn't mm. tell you this. What it required is I had to watch all 300 comedians 10 times a piece. I watched your set 10 times of Dang. you performing, whoever you were, and then I counted how many laughs you got every time you did these amount of minutes. Workhorses. So if you but told me this they don't, they not uh, doing what you're doing. comedian not and told me he did 30 minutes. Shortcuts. Right. And that, and that's the whole point. Yeah. What 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 he's postulating is that um, instead of instead of instead of hacking or using a cheat code, yeah, he says I grinded and yeah. and the grind gives him a certain level of 
of, of speech and latitude that he gets to speak on that everybody can't speak he said, on. He watched 300 comedians 10 times mm -hmm. each. Mm -hmm. Wrote down how many times the crowd laughed. So he, he, watched, he watched 3,000 sets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that's grinding. That, that's what a lot of cats do. We haven't even seen videos. People who are really heavily involved in their craft, they do the things that that lay in obscurity. They do the things that other people won't do because they don't see the necessity for it. But he he's great because he sees it. He does that. I keep going back to it. Floyd Mayweather is one who who. His competitors will tell you that he grinds as if though he's still broke. And Floyd could be touched. Um, a lot of people, you can hate him, be mad at him all day long, but at the end of the day, whether you like him or not, you have to admit that rascal can fight his behind off. And that's just what that is. And so I respect folk who, who respect their craft and they give you nuances of how they got to where they are and they're, they're able to rock out, so I dig it. But uh, hold on, cause cause I wanna, I need, to, I need to head to this meeting. It's, I could tell you that he got twenty six laughs in, in that thirty minutes because I had done the numbers on everybody. So I didn't just say I was funnier. I knew I was funnier than the comic you liked. And I could tell you how many jokes funnier I was because that's how we judge stand up. You do 15 minutes, I do 15 minutes. How do I know I'm funnier than you? Cause you got six laughs and I got 16. I'm almost three times better than you, low key boy boy. But I'm never gonna tell you the formula. So you gonna keep just going out there telling jokes. Now I understand it that I psychologically, the audience by 10 years right. is convinced that I'm funnier than you. They just don't know why. All right. Cause I'm no, putting I out more this. content. Right, there's a meeting that better. I need to get to. I got some, uh, some stuff happening, but at the end of the day, I dig this. So we'll finish this. Um, I I'm think we do part one, part two, but we're going to see. Yeah. I think, I think Shannon does a good job being, being, uh, Genuinely himself, and I love seeing that when 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 stars, celebrities, they they remain naturally who they are, and they don't have to suck up to to the guest and or the host. So yeah, so I I, I dig that. I, I appreciate this. This is this is very insightful.